As mentioned in the previous video, one of the key functions of the cell membrane is to allow exchange of molecules between both sides of the cell. So if we envision the cell membrane as walls to an apartment, it will be as though the walls are not only able to keep things out, but also allow specific items to move in and out of the apartment. Going back to what we know about the cell membrane, it is dynamic and fluid, giving the whole phospholipid bilayer a flexible and malleable structure. Besides that, it also allows certain molecules to transverse through it. Such molecules can just move in and out by slipping through the spaces between the phospholipid molecules. So what are the factors that determine if a molecule is able to move through the cell membrane? The most intuitive factor is of course the molecule size. Small molecules would find it much easier to slip past the tiny gaps between the phospholipid molecules making their way in or out of the cell. However, large macromolecules such as proteins and sugars would definitely find it much harder to make it through the tiny gaps. The second factor is the molecule's concentration gradient. At any given time, a particular molecule will be present at different concentrations on both sides of the cell membrane. By the laws of diffusion, the molecule would naturally migrate from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration with time. On the other hand, for the molecule to move in the opposite direction, it will be way tougher, just like us having to push a heavy load up the slope. Finally, a third factor is the polarity of the molecule. Recalling that both sides of the cell membrane are aqueous, where water molecules form a significant part of the environment. And also, not forgetting the difference in water affinity within each phospholipid molecule. Different layers within the phospholipid bilayer would also naturally have distinct affinity differences towards water. In other words, the core region formed by the non-polar tails which form the bulk of the cell membrane would be hydrophobic whereas the top and bottom side formed by the polar heads would be hydrophilic. So in order to pass through the cell membrane, the determining factor would be to overcome the core non-polar layer, which would be an easy task for the non-polar molecules, since they interact well with the non-polar layer. Also, not forgetting the surrounding aqueous environment, non-polar molecules would definitely have greater incentive to move away from the surrounding aqueous regions and interact with the cell membrane more readily, giving it that extra push to move across the cell membrane.